Okay, so here's something uh, kind of cool. Uh, if we go back to our original uh, CPU um, that we had, uh, I've, I've made some changes. So this custom typing doesn't really work that well in, in Go. There might be a way to do it, but um, I didn't get it to work really well. So let's just, just work with the raw uint uh, 8s for both. Um, this type and then change it here and change it there as well um, all right so uh, we move that to u and 8 okay uh, we need to actually extend our uh, type with some registers which is also uh, u and 8 I believe we can actually just specify that we want two of them and then here we'll just uh, allocate some memory for that. So um, u and eight uh, two. Um, that should be fine. Why is it angry? Ah, okay. Uh, I should not do things off script. That's for sure. Uh, so we have that. Um, we can remove this. Uh, I need a little debug method, but uh, am I using that here? Uh, no, we can we can just use the stuff. Okay, uh, so we can actually uh, remove this and actually write a little program in it. So we're gonna add two numbers, right? Like uh, basically, sort of like. Let's call it the hello world of CPU instruction uh, handling. Um, so we will need to uh, load a value uh, into register one, uh, register zero, okay, fine. And we load the value one, okay? Then we load a value into uh, register one. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep all my instructions for uh, the basic set three letters. Uh, let's just uh, load another one um, and then we need to do an add instruction where the target register is zero uh, and it's going to add zero with the register one value and then we need to halt our processor um, so this is our program uh, it will probably make a little bit more sense once we actually implement all of the functionality that we need to make this run um, let's build this up bit by bit. So, first of all, we're going to handle the load uh, statement. Uh, we will do a call a load method that we don't have yet. We do not need next instruction anymore, so we can just delete that and uh, implement our uh, method. Sorry, uh, on the CPU load. Oops. Uh, so what does load need to do? First of all, it needs to uh, advance the program counter by uh, one. Uh, next, it needs to uh, go into the registers um, and select uh, whatever uh, is now in the memory under the program counter. Um, so let's unpack that really quick. Um, what's the easiest way to do that? Uh, this is erroring, but that, that has a reason. Let's just do it like this. Okay, so we have our program over here, and we have our load instruction over here. So what does it do? Um, actually, I'm I'm missing one more thing. Am I not? Uh, yeah, just explicitly, it's it's already the program counter is already zero because uh, it's not a pointer to an int, so it can't be null, so it needs a value, so it will take its de default value, or its minimum value, zero. Um, in, in fact, it is, it is its default value, because it's uh, an assigned integer, right? So it can have uh, minus one as well. So um, basically we start our switch statement. Uh, this can actually be replaced by uh, something simpler. Uh, our switch statement starts by reading the memory position of the program counter, right? Uh, sorry, mem. 
So here in our memory, our program counter is at zero. So it's reading the instruction log, right? And uh, we fall into this case statement. So it calls CPU load. First thing we do is we advance the program counter. The program counter is now one, meaning that it maps the disposition in memory, right? So that's register zero. That's a reference to register zero, okay? Next, what do we do? Um, let's do that over here on the left side. We uh, go into our register map and we say, okay, read the value from memory that is currently under the program counter. We just said that it, that is a reference to register zero, right? Uh, sorry, let's remove that. We said over here that we are, uh, our program counter is pointing to register zero. So at that point, within that reg register map, uh, we are now basically injecting the value zero, which is selecting that register. So at that point, we can say equals, right? Um, quick reference check, uh, equals um, CPU dot memory, uh, CPU dot uh, program counter plus one. I mean, this probably should uh, makes sense. It's kind of dense when you um, when you look at it, but like basically we say like okay, our program counter is one. We want to select that as the target from the register map, and uh, we, we we want to assign the value that is right next to it. So we just say program counter plus one because that makes it easy. And then what we can do here is CPU um, program counter plus equals two which basically says, okay, even though we are now sort of in the context of assigning this value, our program counter is still just sitting there on register one. So what we need to do is one, two, to get to the next actual usable instruction, like callable instruction, right? So uh, we've done it, like we've loaded, uh, we've set it up to be able to load into registers, basically. Like we don't need to do anything more than that. All we need to do now is start with the next instruction, which is add. We'll do the same thing, right? right? We just define a method CPU on the CPU. Uh, this keyboard is going uh, slowly, so I need a new keyboard. Uh, CPU program counter. This is kind of the same pattern. Like uh, we are already, we handled the load uh, instruction. So we want to go to the next one to see uh, okay, uh, we're gonna again do a lookup in the registers. Uh, in this case, uh, mem CPU PC. We can actually abstract that out into uh, reusable code later because we're gonna do a lot of this stuff. Uh, at that point, what we wanna do is we wanna add uh, uh, the value in regi register zero and one together and store that back into register zero, right? Very familiar pattern to this kind of um, low level instruction programming. Um, all right, so let's just um, write it out so then we can discuss it. Uh, CPU, mem, CPU uh, program counter plus one, and then eventually we want to do again CPU dot program counter plus equals two. So we'll do it the same way. So uh, we've handled our load instructions. We can do that now. Uh, and to quickly go over it, you're on a load instruction. You advance the program counter by one, target that register, uh, and basically do a soft advance to this position and then while you're here, skip two positions. So then we do that exact same thing again to load something into register one. And now we're here at the add statement. We've just handled it. And then look on the left side to that add method and follow along. So we advance the program counter to uh, one, uh, the next one. Uh, now we say, okay, we have register zero as a reference. We look that up in, in the register map. And then we assign to that the value of register zero. Um, so we do a lookup into the register map and just pick pick the value and then uh, uh, add that with um, the value in register one using a soft advance of the program counter. 
and then advance the program counter which is at the moment still here same pattern by two and get to the hold statement and and just hold so if everything went well uh, we should now actually be able to um, do something uh, just to make this visible we're gonna do a couple of things um, <clears throat> first I need an exit value uh, which needs to be used here instead of the um, the break uh, or the return I need to uh, just break and then we need to uh, set exit to true and similarly we can see that's that's about all we need then um, here I can say if uh, if exit then I can actually break again because we're, we're basically two blocks deep right like we have a for loop we can break out of and we have a switch statement that we can break out of and since the for loop is infinite we need an exit case um, and also I want to do something here which is um, um, yeah print I want to print uh, well just to make it very explicit uh, I want to print the memory like this um, so print value an interface actually and um, uh, actually format it right um, I want to also print the registers so that should be it uh, I think we can run this so let's try it all right, so let's unpack it real quick. Our memory is a, a set of uint eights, right? Uh, everything eventually, no matter that we have those nice uh, um, uh, sort of custom uh, constants, um, we we still we're just mapping to 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 numbers in the end to integers. Um, so, okay, our uh, memory uh, has this this set of instructions and values uh, it doesn't really matter that they're mixed so uh, and then and, and then basically the register um, after the first sort of iteration uh, has the value one in it that's what we that's what our program dictates right like first we set the value one into register zero uh, then in the next iteration we set another value one into register one and then in the uh, after the add instruction we've added uh, one uh, register zero and register one together and stored that back into register zero so that is now two register one still contains the one value it's up to the um, programmer to um, to deal with that like we do not do any extra instructions like clean up a register or something so uh, just to uh, sort of give give one more example of it I, I assume like usually when I try you know going off script something will go wrong but I assume that this would also run uh, and we do indeed end up with seven in register zero so that's basically how you um, start adding instructions um, and you should be able to do uh, subdivide uh, multiply and divide now uh, because I'm going to focus on a different uh, part of that so like if you are following along or are doing this you can add those yourself and otherwise you will see them be added in the next video in sort of rapid speed uh, and then we can get into whatever the next um, I think the next uh, uh, step will be to basically put back the high level uh, language so that we can actually go from something that is I don't know if I have an ad right here no, but like something that um, I don't know I was like kind of designing a little bit but maybe something that we can do like uh, yeah I don't know if we can ma basically make this work or something I'd, I'd like that uh, so that basically means that we have to put uh, the uh, the lexer the parser uh, and, and then I a, a, a um, uh, a builder not a compiler uh, an assembler together yeah so um, that will be the next video thank you for watching